Hi guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do an experiment where we are going to investigate how does the length of a pendulum affect the period of its oscillation. We're also going to try and calculate from our data the gravitational field strength of Earth. Now the gravitational field strength of Earth we know to be 9.81 newtons per kilogram, or the, we could call that the acceleration due to gravity, as 9.81 meters per second squared. So our experimental data should give us a good indication of, well, once we've calculated the acceleration due to gravity, it should give us an idea of how good or how reliable our experiment was. And this is really good for people beginning physics courses because that means that we can design an experiment, look at a true value and see how good our experiment was, and then try and see if we can suggest some realistic improvements for it. Now, normally when I would teach this in school, I would have a retort stand and I would have a length of string and I would have a stopwatch with me and I'd have a pendulum. Now, I don't have a pendulum with me today, so what I've done is made a quick little pendulum bob, this is called, out of some Lego. When you're making it at home, you can use pretty much anything for the pendulum bob, as long as it's got a little bit of mass, as long as it weighs a couple of grams or so, you can use things like coins, pieces of Lego, anything really. Um, I was even thinking of using my wedding ring, but I think my wife would have killed me if I did that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use, I'm gonna use Lego, and I've just got a piece of thin string here. Now you could use sewing thread, you could use uh, like any piece of string you've got lying around. It needs to be about a length of one meter, and it needs to be as thin as you can possibly get it. It needs to be basically what we call, like we, we're gonna make an assumption that the string is massless. Now in reality, it's not massless, it has some mass, but we need to be it to be as thin and as rigid as possible. We also don't want the string to stretch, so it needs to be really taut. So something like sewing twine would work really well, dental floss if you had some lying around, even in a pinch, maybe a shoelace or, you know, like a piece of string from a hoodie, something like that would work as well, okay? Now normally what I would do as well is I would use this retort stand here like this, and if I was in school we would have it set up like this, and we need to measure the length, so I would use a metre ruler which I've borrowed from the school, but if you've got a tape measure, if you've got a ruler, if you've got a ruler that can measure 10 centimetres, that's fine. And what you're going to do is you're going to start off with your longest length first. Now, we are going to collect some data and our data is going to vary we're going to vary the length of this string by um, from starting off from ideally a meter. Now I've made it a little bit shorter in this case, and you're going to shorten the string in increase um, in uh, equal intervals each time. So in this case, I'm going to increase decrease the length by about 10 centimeters every time. A lot of people ask me what is the best or how many results should I get for this experiment, and the correct answer there is no correct answer, but the best answer would I would give is as many as you can realistically take. So I would suggest re reducing the length by this by either five centimeters or 10 centimeters and making sure that you're able to get at least seven separate results. Now, the more, diff the, the, the more results you can get, the better and the, more, uh, the better your experiment or the more valid your experiment is going to be. So I'm gonna start off here. I've measured this as a length of 40 centimeters and when we're measuring the length we measure to the center of mass of the bob. So in this case, I'm measuring it from the, the division between the white and the blue there. So that's the center of mass, and the length from here to here is 40 centimeters. Now I measured it with a meter ruler, but what you could do is either mark out 10 centimeter intervals with a pen or anything like that, and then you could just keep moving up each time. And to measure time, normally in school we would use a stopwatch, but what I'm gonna use instead is my digital watch here, and I'm just gonna measure the reading here like this with my stopwatch. I'm gonna turn it sideways like this so it doesn't come into contact with the, the pole, <laughs> so it doesn't hit the pole on the way forth. And I'm gonna pull it back a certain length and I'm gonna measure the period of oscillation. Now to do this, I need to make sure that I don't pull back the pendulum too far because at the moment it's not too bad, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna wobble and perturbate more. It's gonna cause a lot of problems later on. So I'm gonna pull it back, try and pull it back an even amount each time, and just let it go like so. Now, uh, one period of oscillation, one period of oscillation is the time it takes for me to drop it from here and the way back here. Okay, so that will be one period of oscillation. Now, as I'm measuring, as my independent variable is length and my dependent variable is time, I'm gonna be measuring time with my stopwatch, but I don't wanna measure just one period of oscillation. 
because one period of oscillation is quite short. And if I try to do that with my stopwatch, I'll try that again. If I try to do that with my stopwatch, my reaction time is going to be added to this time here, and it's going to cause a like it's going to cause a systematic error. There's going to be some issues there. So what I'm going to do to reduce that is I'm going to measure the period of oscillation for 10 oscillations, and that will reduce my reaction time error in here. So I'm going to start it off like this and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and stop. And so I've got the period of oscillation for ten, the period for the time for ten oscillations at a length of 40 centimeters is 13.95 seconds. So I'm going to make a note of that, and then I'm going to divide that by 10, and that will give me the period for one oscillation. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the length, or sorry, decrease the length, and in this case I'm going to decrease it to 30 centimetres. And again, I'm going to measure with my ruler the length of oscillation. I've got about 30 centimetres there. And what I'm going to do is I'm always going to measure it from the length there to the length there, and I'm going to take another reading, and I'm going to see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to, as I increase the length here like this, so I'll clear it, talk amongst yourselves guys while, Mr. while I try and figure out how to work this watch. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go as I shorten the length, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I've got a shorter time and I've got 12.75 seconds for this length here. Now, what I would do for each, or what you're going to do when you do this experiment, is you're going to vary the length and you need to get at least seven different lengths in order to do this experiment successfully. The more lengths you can get, the better, basically. Okay. Now, obviously, you're probably not going to have a retort stand lined around the house, but there are a few options you can use in order to do this experiment. Okay. So, obviously, a piece of string, you need it as tight uh, or as rigid and as taut as possible. You need a bob of some kind. I would suggest a coin or anything around that weight, something like a a relatively heavy coin or something like that will do the job perfectly. Anything that you can attach to. If you can't attach it, you can always sticky tape it to the string. It doesn't really matter. Whatever, you need to be as creative as you can. Now, what I would suggest in terms of having something to suspend this from is using a table leg. So what I would do in this case is I would actually, if I didn't have the retort stand, is I would attach the pendulum to with a little bit of sticky tape or a heavy book or something like that to the length of the table. And what you'll find is the table will give you a suitable length in order to suspend it from to have that really long pendulum, and then you can increase, or sorry, you can decrease it as you go along, okay? Right, in a second what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna, I'm gonna quickly show you how I'm gonna write up those results in my, uh, how I'm gonna draw my table of results and design a suitable table of results. And then we'll talk about, in the next video, how we're going to process this data that we've collected in order to draw our conclusion, how does what is the relationship between the length of a pendulum and its period of oscillation? But also, how are we going to process that data in order to calculate the acceleration due to gravity? Right, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye. Hubs, look, it's a pendulum. What do you think? What do you think of the pendulum, Hubs? Okay.